Hello there, good morning. Just after half past six, Saturday morning, you're watching Breakfast Today with Naga and John. Good morning to you. And we've got Mike on the sofa as well because we're talking sport. Of course, morning. Yes, good morning. There will be lots of people today, won't there? How many running the 40,000. Well, it's going to be the biggest ever because you've got 40,000 actually running on the streets of London. This is the London Marathon. But another nearly 40,000 doing it virtually still, even though they yeah. can physically do it again, but they mm. want to be involved around the world. So today is a day... I remember I did it oh, once. Yes. And you've, you've done, done it twice. You've yeah. done it twice. It's, today's the day you rest yeah. and you kind of... Eat you make your plans, steadily. You make pasta. your plans. You make, yeah, oh, oh, it's always past Banana isn't? loading. Yeah. yeah, and then and then just think right. The trick is just enjoy it because the oh, atmosphere. Is, absolutely. The atmosphere is amazing. Most people, and I totally agree with them, say it's one of the best days of your life because you've got that personal story at the heart of why you're running it. Yeah. You've got that personal goal to aim for, an enormous challenge which you've prepared this time around, probably two years for mm. some people. Started training two years ago, uh, but then at the same time you've got the whole crowd pulling you along, haven't you? The crowd watching and also the other runners. Yeah. And it's magical. Yeah. You make so many friends. There's, there's it's... And each one of those runners has another story in their own personal exactly. reason. Exactly. That's what's making it yeah. so special. Yeah. And haven't we missed it? I know there was the elite race last year, but this, you know, it's properly back. Yeah, tomorrow morning. Good luck if you do it, by the way. Uh, 40,000 people will be on the streets of the capital as the London Marathon makes its comeback. And a return to some normality, as I was saying last year's event, was just limited to the, the elite runners and thousands forced to take part virtually because of the pandemic. Well, I've been speaking this week to some of those who have been preparing for the big race. It's finally back, the world-famous marathon that gets 40,000 people running together all with individual stories and reasons why they're pounding the streets of London. Among the most emotional, Claire Nash and Wayne Flanagan, running in memory of their daughter Jade, who died in January this year, just 10 days after she was born. Both Claire and Wayne had tested positive for COVID-19 just days before Jade suffered unforeseen complications during her birth. I remember her being placed on my lower abdomen for just a few seconds and then they took her away to the bed to start resuscitating her and yeah I kind of it's all a bit of a blur I just remember lots of people coming into the room and lots of words being shouted and seeing like two fingers like pushing up and down on her chest um but at that moment in time I didn't think that she wouldn't survive I just had it in my head that she was going to be okay she just needed a bit of help Jade was named after the midwife who delivered her and helped get her heart beating again, giving mum, dad and brother Elijah ten days together. The most precious ten days yeah. of our lives. Um, Undoubtedly. Yeah. Um, we got to do her footprints and we sang to her, didn't we? Immediately after Jade died, um, I started running as a way to um, kind of try start to understand like my grief and, and the loss of Jade and um, the emotions and just felt so overwhelmed quite often. So as I started running more and more, I just realised like the benefits for me, my mental health, my well-being. So we are running it um, to raise awareness and funds for the people that cared for us and Jade during the time, so NHS and care workers. There's going to be lots of tears. Um, and lots of smiles. Mm. We know that we're going to have a lot of friends cheering us on, so it'll be really special to see them. And I think the thing that's going to help push me through is obviously knowing that Jade's there, but hearing everybody shout her name as well, mm. that's going to be really, really special. This driving force is the same for Laura Hughes, whose brother Colin McGinty was stabbed to death in a random attack in Liverpool 20 years ago. His family and friends have waited for 18 months to run the London Marathon to mark what would have been his 40th birthday and to raise awareness of knife crime. Through running, they've already raised £20,000 for youth anti-knife crime projects and bleeding control kits, which they want installed in more public places. It's to stop someone from bleeding to death. So what's happening or what has happened is young people, for example, are getting into a fight, somebody's stabbed and they're bleeding to death quicker than an ambulance can get to them. As tragic as this sounds, it's a little bit more bearable in Colin's life. He didn't die in vain. He's died. We're doing these things to potentially save somebody else's life. This is going to be on another level, emotionally tough. But for me, we are running because Colin can't. And Colin can't, and there's lots of other people like Colin that can't. And that's going to keep us engaged and get the 26.2 miles done. 
So it's going to be one of the great days of your life. There are so many personal heart-wrenching stories and now, after this record-breaking amount of time of individual training, of telling those stories alone, at last this week, finally, runners are able to feel the love of the whole running community as they drop their bags off, they get registered, feeling the crowd support more than ever before. Being able to run together in a safe way, it's outdoors, it's the best place to be. I truly believe that this is going to be one of the most emotional, emotional and memorable London marathons in the history of an event that's had some pretty special moments. Last year, over 37,000 people did run the marathon virtually on their own, wherever they could, joining in in spirit and via their screens. And even though a similar number are signed up to do it again virtually this year, there's nothing like the real thing. Last year I ran on my own in the rain for all day and it took 11 hours. This year it will be wonderful to stand at the back of all these fit people and do marathon in my time, which is seven hours, and enjoy it for this lady here, who is my inspiration. She's had an MS for years and years and years, and I look after her and all her knees day in, day out. And I've got to get a dinner in a minute, haven't you, idea? Yes! And it's certainly not the same running virtually if you want to stand out from the crowd and are trying to break a world record like Phil as the fastest man as a tractor or heavy duty vehicle. My family friend died about five years ago of an undiagnosed heart condition and he was really into agriculture and farming and absolutely loved tractors. Um, so I'd run three previous for Cardiac Risk in the Young and Team Ben Hammond um, and my wife came up with the idea of doing it in a tractor so it's my wife's fault really. Liv's aiming to break a marathon record dressed as a monarch. Her first two royal suggestions were rejected, but she's allowed to be Henry VIII, aiming for under four and a half hours. I managed to get through without the beard, but I had to wear a crown, a spire, and a coronation outfit, and provide a picture of a historical reference of when he was actually wearing it, to be accurate enough. Then, you know, I didn't become an Olympic athlete, but maybe I can become a world-famous monarch marathon runner, who knows? <laughs> And three flatmates from Brixton have taken their training to a new level as they try to break the four-legged world marathon record in under four hours and 44 minutes, ironically enough. As if the training wasn't hard enough, they've been gaining support for their cause through their social media videos. I mean, to be honest, we're, we're men of very few discernible talents. Uh, so as a starting point, we kind of we wanted to raise as much money as possible for our charity, which is MenCap. So we trawled through the Guinness World Record options. Uh, this was pretty much the only one we thought we had a shot at. Um, also, Mike and Andrew actually have quite a good connection to this because in 1998 they won the three-legged village race oh, yes. and they frankly have not stopped talking about it since. How challenging is this then? Let's have an idea of the rhythm you need. It's fine as long as you've got the same length of stride. Mine might be a bit little for you, <laughs> for you guys. <laughs> Thankfully, every other runner doesn't need to be physically tied to anyone else to feel the love and support of the thousands running beside them as they make their personal journeys with their loved ones in their hearts. Uh, so many people to look out for then tomorrow, because it is on the BBC, you can watch it all live. We'll have more build-up on breakfast. We'll be live there on the start line tomorrow morning. Watching that, and it, you and I are just reminiscing oh. about when we, when we ran it. It's, it's just a brilliant, brilliant feeling. Yeah. I, I, I don't envy them, but I, <laughs> I would never do it again. Well, then, no, I was going to say, maybe you should do no, it again. I yeah, but they're in a nice again. place now, because they've done all the training, hopefully, so yeah. they're just going to enjoy it now. Exactly. I, I envy the fact that they're going to have this brilliant atmosphere. That's, yeah. And that's something to treasure, It definitely. is, absolutely. Uh, right, we'll get more on that later. We're going to speak to Paula Radcliffe. Mm, yeah, that'd the be great. Record breaker. Get some tips. Nine. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's get the rest of the sports news for now. It's uh, three Super League Grand Finals in a row now for St Helens.